The first chapter of the first Wheel of Time book, The Eye of the World, begins on an empty road in the year 998 NE of what some might call the Third Age. The Wheel of Time turns, and ages come and pass. But what exactly happened in ages past to lead up to this moment? Let's go back, year by year, age by age, to the very beginning of time to find out. This video is the first part of a series that will focus on the history of the Wheel of Time books in chronological order, starting from the very beginning of creation itself and leading up to the start of the first book in Robert Jordan's epic fantasy series. This video does contain minor historical and world-building spoilers, but for the most part will not include story or plot-related details for the main series of books. There might be times throughout this series where the spoilers are a bit heavier, I will reveal the spoiler meter and keep it on the top corner of the video for those sections as needed. Feel free to mute the video or skip ahead to avoid anything that may be more spoiler heavy. I will also be intentionally leaving out major historical events that are considered to be spoilers for the main series. These heavier spoilers will be marked on the timeline as a double question mark. Sometimes the mysteries of what happened in the past are revealed throughout the books and I don't want to spoil them here. So I'll be creating a spoiler heavy timeline follow up video at the end of this less spoilery series that will include these events. Note, there's a brilliant website called wheeloftimelines.com that does an in-depth breakdown of the timelines of the Wheel of Time books, starting with the first chapter of the Eye of the World and working through the map and calendar all the way until the ending of A Memory of Light. I've reached out to the creator of that site and have been granted permission to use the term Wheel of Timelines for this video series. But to be clear, this series is in no way affiliated with the wheeloftimelines.com site. As I researched this particular subject, I found information about the timelines from various sites and books that sometimes seem to contradict one another. I've pulled the majority of my information from a website that deserves a shout out called sevenspokes.com. Not only was this site the most useful, but almost every sentence or paragraph has a reference to a specific page of the books or companions to back up the info. All references are included in a Google Doc link in the description of this video. Even so, there are likely to be some mistakes as not all of the history of the Wheel of Time is clearly mapped out. Okay, so, the Wheel of Time turns and creates a great pattern which consists of seven repeated ages or time periods of history. The Great Pattern is literally the fabric of reality, where all people and things in the universe exist. Each of the seven spokes of the wheel represent an age. If we were to look at the repeated seven ages, they would look something like this. It is unclear how many times these ages have repeated before, perhaps five times, perhaps five million. We just don't know. Forget the fact that this timeline has repeated in the past, and let's focus on the story from this turning of the wheel as it is presented in the text. But for the purposes of this timeline video, let's look at the history of the ages in a more linear fashion. Remember, each age is not necessarily the same length as the previous or following age. What we know is that the third age covers about 3,500 years. Here is where the first book begins, in the year 998 NE of the third age. To understand how we got here, let's go back to the beginning. Well, if we can call it that. We know that there are no beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time. But it stands to reason that at some point there was a true beginning, a moment when the Wheel of Time first began to turn and the first, first age began. Before existence, before history began, before the ages, perhaps even before the existence of the Dark One, there was a moment. The characters in the story frequently mention this event as the moment of creation. We know that the Creator, the Dark One, and the True Source, as well as the predetermined plan for the pattern, are the only known things to exist outside of the Great Pattern and the Wheel of Time. Because we don't know how many times the ages have repeated, nor is it clear if the moment of creation happened previous to the turning of the Wheel of Time, I will place this moment as a dot outside of the main timeline of repeated ages. However, it is possible that the moment of creation is also a repeated part of the cyclical turning of the Wheel of Time. Perhaps the ending of the Seventh Age requires a complete reboot of the Wheel of Time and a new creation or Big Bang of some sort to restart the wheel back into the First Age again. Perhaps the moment of creation was not a moment at all, 
but billions of years of geological creation and evolution. Or perhaps it literally happened in the blink of an eye. This visual representation is pretty, but not necessarily accurate to how Robert Jordan may have envisioned the creation of the world of the Wheel of Time. Within the books, there are many unreliable references from characters about this moment of creation. When discussing the Dark One or his followers, it is common for characters in the books to repeat the following words by rote as a sort of catechism or prayer. The Dark One and all of the Forsaken are bound in Shail Ghul, beyond the Great Blight, bound by the Creator at the moment of creation, bound until the end of time. The hand of the Creator shelters the world, and the light shines on us all. We'll talk more about what this means later, but as we'll see throughout this timeline series, this statement is at least partially false. For example, the Forsaken, Shail Ghul, and the Great Blight do not come into existence until near the ending of the Second Age. So it is not possible that the Forsaken were bound in Shail Ghul at the moment of creation. On the other hand, we do know from companion books and other writings from Robert Jordan that the Dark One was somehow imprisoned at the moment of creation. But how that prison works is not entirely clear and will be discussed in greater detail in another video. One thing is clear. The Dark One was unable to influence the world or the pattern when he was imprisoned outside of the pattern. Also, it is important to point out that some references online, including other videos from some YouTubers, have one point about the creation and the Dark One wrong. Specifically, there is a wiki article that is often referenced by others that states that the Dark One came into existence at the moment of creation. However, outside of this article, there is no actual reference to this being true that I could find. And in all of the published works by Robert Jordan, it simply states that the Dark One was imprisoned at the moment of creation. This implies to me that the Dark One and the Creator both already existed as counterparts outside of the creation of the Wheel of Time and the Great Pattern. There is a single reference to something called the First Day, which is mentioned only once by a character in the first book. This could refer to the very first day of existence or creation. There is also exactly one reference to something called the First Moment by another character in the books. But interestingly, there is an entry in the Wheel of Time Companion reference book for this. It states, First moment, the time when all life was created. So let's assume for now that the moment of creation, or the creation of life, happened as a single event that may or may not have taken place over millions of years. But let's place it here, outside of the main timeline of ages. Now, let's assume that this is the first day. We don't know what that looked like exactly. Was it Adam and Eve? Cavemen? The first living single-celled organism? Something else? Whatever the first day looked like, we'll assume that the first, first age started here. Perhaps many turnings of the wheel happen in this space between. To muddy things further, the books take place in what is called the third age by some. This is important to mention because Robert Jordan was adamant in interviews about clarifying that just because the characters in the books think they live in the third age does not necessarily make it true. For all we know, the Wheel of Time books actually take place in the 5th or 7th age. This is simply not clear and was not meant to be clarified by Robert Jordan. Again, we have to go on the assumption that the books take place in the 3rd age. And so we will start at what we assume to be the 1st age, according to the characters in the books. One of the biggest themes of the books is that as time passes, memory fades to legend, legend fades to myth, and eventually myth and all memory or record of past events are lost. Because the series takes place in the third age, very little is known about the first age. There are some fragments and tales of the first age that are mentioned as stories and legends. As mentioned in my video about the Great Pattern, Robert Jordan included Easter eggs in the books that imply that the First Age actually includes our world history. In other words, the Wheel of Time series does take place in our world, but in the very distant future or very, very distant past. I won't include a lesson of our world history here, but we can assume that much of what we know of the world or a variation of our world history took place sometime in the First Age or possibly the Seventh and First Ages. For this next section, I'm moving the spoiler meter up a bit because some of these Easter eggs which point to our time are revealed throughout the books. However, these Easter eggs do not spoil the main plot or character development of the books. Feel free to skip ahead when the spoiler meter is removed if you wish to find these Easter eggs on your own while reading the series. Some of the legends or mythological figures that are mentioned in the first book include Len, who flew to the moon in the belly of an eagle made of fire, and Salia, 
his daughter who walked among the stars. Robert Jordan did say these refer to John Glenn, who was the first American astronaut to orbit the Earth, and Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. The eagle made of fire likely represents the rocket ship that was used in the Apollo 11 mission to fly to the moon. Listen, uh, the eagle has landed. A few other mythological figures who are mentioned as legends include Mosk the Giant, who fought against another giant called Merc, Elsbeth, the Queen of All, Materis the Healer, and Anla, the Wise Counselor. Robert Jordan confirmed that the giants Mosk and Merc referred to the super nations of Moscow, or Russia, and America during the Cold War. Mosk the Giant was said to wield a lance of fire that could reach around the world. This likely refers to Russia's nuclear weapons capabilities. Elsbeth, the Queen of All, likely refers to Queen Elizabeth, and Ma Therese the Healer is probably a reference to Mother Teresa. Anla, the wise counselor, was confirmed by Robert Jordan to be Ann Landers, the popular newspaper columnist who shared advice for over 50 years during the 20th century. At one point in Book 4, The Shadow Rising, a character enters a museum in the Panarch's Palace in Tanchico, where there are multiple ancient artifacts and skeletons of lost creatures from ages past. Many objects are mentioned, but there are specific references to a skeleton that appears to be a giraffe or long-necked dinosaur, another skeleton that is like a bear but with large boar-like teeth or fangs, and a relic is mentioned that gives off a sense of pride and vanity. This object is described as looking similar to the hood ornament of a Mercedes-Benz car. Though it is not clear when portal stones were created, we do know that researching Aes Sedai in the Second Age believe that portal stones were created in a previous age to theirs, so I've included that here. The Horn of Valir was also said to be created in an age previous to the Second Age, so I will place it here as well, though the Horn and portal stones may have been created before the First Age. When asked why the horn includes Old Tongue script, Maria Simmons, one of Robert Jordan's closest associates who had access to all of his notes, said that the Old Tongue inscription was added to the horn during the Second Age, or Age of Legends, but the horn itself comes from an earlier age. Ages often end with a large event or discovery. Robert Jordan stated that age-ending events don't fit a certain set of criteria, but quote, you'll know it when you see it. There is some contradictory information about when the first age ended and the second age began, but it seems that the discovery of the true source and subsequent learning to channel the one power was the catalyst that ushered in the second age. In the next video, we'll discuss the discovery of the one power, the second age, which was later called the age of legends, and the opening of the boar, which resulted in the Dark One's evil influencing the world. Please support me on Patreon so I can crank more of these out more regularly. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to my researchers and editors who helped with the script. And thank you to the artists who gave me permission to use your artwork. Please check links in the description to learn more about them and their great work. You may be interested to know that I include the full script as well as extensive notes and references in the description of each of my deep dive videos. I also try to give credit for every piece of artwork or music or quote that I use. There's an additional link in the description that contains a timecode based reference list for every single asset that is used in these videos. For example, my video about the One Power contains over 60 references and 226 credited assets. If there is a piece of artwork or a quote that you are interested in finding, or if I'm using artwork without giving proper credit, please follow the timecode links as mentioned in the links below, and feel free to reach out to me through Twitter or Discord. May the light illumine you.